Hi there, welcome back. Well, as you can see, this amplifier has been closed up. Now that means I'm doing this intro at the end of whatever I'm going to do on this video. Obvious, but this project was uh, dragging on for quite a bit, even for my own standards. So um, I, quite frankly, I was getting a little bit tired of uh, finding new things to do. And um, some of them were challenging. Some of them were easy. And one of them I found was probably not a good idea. You can probably guess what that was. It's the FM alignment. Now, I've done the AM alignment in quite some detail. And I would have liked to have done the FM alignment with the same amount of detail, but two reasons why I decided not to go that route. One is the FM is actually coming through very, very well in all regards. The decoding, the stereo is working, the reception is exceptionally good, the quality of sound is amazing. I'll be doing a demonstration at the end of this video for all the bands. And I decided to leave well enough alone because if you don't have the right equipment, and especially with uh, things like signal generators going up to 100 megahertz, it's probably a bit of a hit and miss what you're going to get. Admittedly, most of the alignment is done on 10.7 megahertz, and my generator can do that. But uh, it's just something I felt was uh, go down a rabbit hole that I would regret going down. So I decided to leave that part alone. It's in perfect condition, as far as I can tell. But there were quite a few other things I needed to do. Let me show you. I'm pretty happy with the result of the translation of the surface manual into English. I think uh, we've got a document now that's usable. I uh, have counted on uh, the help of quite a few people who have sent me translations, but I think we've got now a document which is pretty accurate and um, actually quite clear for anybody who wants to look at this in English. And so I'll be posting that up as a final document soon, probably today. But uh, we get to the sticky part, and that is the uh, adjustment instructions, specifically the FM section. Now here there are things like the FMIF, which is 10.7 uh, megahertz, and I could probably do that with the equipment that I've got. I certainly have done that before with uh, tube radios. But I'm not happy that I could do a decent job of it, at least not improve on what's already possible. And the result so far, at least the, what I'm getting from the FM, is very, very good sound, very good reception. So I figured, well, why mess with it? And um, without having a signal generator that goes up to 100 megahertz, I can't really test the dial uh, accuracy. And quite frankly, I've got four or five FM stations in Madeira. It's not that important to me anyway. We know where they are. But um, the instructions are pretty complete anyway. So anybody who wants to go ahead, it's probably got enough information here translated into English to do a proper job of it with the proper equipment. Stereo decoder seems to be working well as well. So again, no reason to mess with that. I really am reluctant to set that off. It's just my luck. <laughs> It'll work worse than it does now. Now here's the part we started on, the AM IF amplifier, the uh, IF alignment, the front end, the long wave, medium wave and short wave. The IF trap was done. So all that is completed and quite well documented in the previous video, probably ad nauseum. The voltage stabilization I also set in the previous video to 25 volts, so that's been done. The part that's outstanding is the diode tuning voltage. Now, this thing uses vericap diodes. Vericap diodes require a voltage to establish the capacitance uh, as opposed to using a tuning capacitor. And uh, they require a very stable, very accurate 20 volt setting. That hadn't been checked, so that's something I need to do. And uh, as soon as that's done, we've got a good reference voltage, maximum voltage for the tuning section. Then of course, the start point of the voltage that you're gonna feed to the vericap diodes 
has to be accurately set. In other words, in this particular case, you know that 4.5 volts has to correspond to 87.5 uh, megahertz. So you set that and you do the same for the start point voltages of each of the, of the tuner presets. It's one start point voltage, which again, you have to adjust to 4.5 volts. So that's something that needs doing as well. And it's fairly easy. Now the FM scale, the uh, field strength meter has a minimum and a maximum. This thing tells you how to adjust it. I don't have a, a generator that can accurately send out those voltages. So I'm just gonna use the uh, no signal level as zero and the strongest station as max. And then of course the power amplifier needs an adjustment to the uh, crescent current, which I did at the beginning, but I need to redo that just before we complete. So I think uh, the tasks for today are quite clear and um, that's what we are going to tackle in this video. Now the diode tuning voltage needs a very stable 20 volts and very accurate 20 volts. And that is actually set with uh, variable resistor 135, which is that guy over there. And they tell you to measure the 20 volts at point one, which I believe is uh, actually number four over here. But I think that's a mistake because when I do that, I get about 4.5. So I believe that um, you should measure it at point one. And I get exactly 20 volts or set it exactly to 20 volts with R135. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now the next step is to actually set the um, starting point voltage for the tuner scale. And what they tell you to do is to tune to the left. In other words, absolute left on 87.5 megahertz on the dial. This is obviously all on FM. And on point one, you should adjust resistor R137 to 4.5 volts. Now that R137 took me a while to find, but it's actually a little uh, white gear that's on the back of the tuning condenser. Uh, didn't look like a pot at all, but I adjusted it. And if I go to point one, which is pin four on here. Now I'm not tuned to, you see, as I tune it, I'm getting different voltages. Now I'm turning left, 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 all the way to 87.5. You can adjust it quite close. It's very, very touchy. And that's where I'm leaving it. 4.495, close enough. So the uh, start point voltage for the tuner scale is now set. Now next, they tell you to do the start point voltages for the tuner presets. And the way you do that is you use R132, which is that guy over there. And uh, you set it on tuner preset. For example, I've set it to one. I measure pin four uh, again, which is point one on the test setup. And I've got the tuning on the absolute left. Those presets have got a button which you rotate. And you see I can get it up or down to exactly 4.5 volts. That's where we are. So that's done. Now if I tune one of the others, they're all set to different values. And I'm tuning number two, absolute left, and I get back to 4.5 volts. And then if I tune up from it, I start getting different values as it tunes, okay? So that too is now set. Now the next setting is to actually set the FM scale. In other words, the uh, signal strength meter scale. And um, they tell you to inject a 90 megahertz signal into a dummy antenna through a ballon at exactly one millivolts. And then you set that to the maximum. The next is you change that to 0.5. It's actually microvolts. Yeah, you set, change it to 0.5 microvolts. And then with R345, which is that one there, you set it to the zero scale. 
In other words, you put it on minimum strength. So that's 346 for the maximum, 345 for the minimum. Now, I'm not, uh, I don't have a 60 to 240 ballon. In fact, in this case, it would be a 50 to 240 ballon because my signal generator is 50 ohm uh, output impedance. So I've decided to do the next best thing. I'm getting the maximum reading quite well, and it's all a relative reading anyway. So I've decided to leave the maximum well enough alone, and then I'm just going to tweak that guy so that when I'm tuned onto the band with no signal, in other words, no station, I can actually set that to zero because at the moment it's going below zero. It almost seems to be pegging. So that's something I definitely want to do. And that's what I'll do now. And the last adjustment I'm doing is the bias setting of the audio amplifier. And that is audio power amplifier section set R708 and 608. That's uh, these two pots over here, that one and that one. And you measure across the two emitter resistors. And the best way to do that is to go to the collectors, the two collectors over there, collector to collector. And they tell you to set it for 15 millivolts which corresponds to a bias current of 16 milliamps. So we've just got a little bit of tweaking to do here. That's one. I'll set it up on the other one now. Switch this off when you're doing this because you might short something. It's not far off. You switch it on, you've got to leave it for a while. This thing's been playing for a while. I just switched it off to change the probes. So it's warm enough. Again, very sensitive. What I'm probably going to do is buy some 10-turn uh, pots to replace these with. But that can be done at any time. There we go. Done. Les 
Šlechta šel a říká, protože synové, který prodával slunečníky, nešli od zda. Tenemos al doctor eh, Castro Viejo, tenemos a Gregorio Marañón y tenemos a personas. Pero, pero ¿por qué? ¿Para qué? Yo creo que porque para que la gente no se relaje. Para el lado hoy que también elimina la pena de muerte a menores de edad. Alucinante. Alucinante. Bueno, Cristina Sánchez. Responsal para Oriente Medio, buenas noches. Here we are again, end of another project. And I really uh, quite enjoyed this one. It was a lot more intricate than I thought it was going to be. Um, <laughs> it's usually the case when I think something's going to be easy. It tends to throw up its challenges. But I enjoyed this and um, I've actually enjoyed particularly creating the translated version of the uh, service manual, which I think is uh, very needed. I'm sure there are a lot of these sets out there that are probably in need of repair or restoration, but uh, not everybody not everybody understands German. But with the help of quite a few of my subscribers, whom I want to thank, I think we've now got a workable document. As somebody suggested, I'll try and upload this to Hi-Fi Engine and make it useful to somebody else. And um, the result is what? I've got a receiver here that has very good FM. Bear in mind that where I am, I get four stations, five stations max. And as you can see, although I can't play it because it's playing music now, you know, you get quite a, a good strength signal. The, the stereo comes through, not a problem. So this thing is working very, very well on FM. On uh, AM, no surprises. A lot of noise on the, uh, on the long wave, but that's because of all my installation here. So reception seems to be okay. It only goes up to 7.5 megahertz on the shortwave, which means it's only useful really at night. 
but that's fine. So I'm pretty happy with the result, and uh, I think this one's a keeper. Yeah, the uh, cabinet work was, again, not uh, too complicated. There were a couple of little things that needed fixing, and they got done. All the cleaning was done. It cleaned up quite well. There are a few signs of age on the chassis itself, which I couldn't do anything about, but that's fine. So yeah, that's it. Another goodbye. And um, I want to thank you all for tagging along, if you have, for your help with the translations, if you've been part of that as well. And um, I hope this inspires you to do something similar to one of these sets or something like it and keep it out of the dump. That's what the whole point is here in Restorations. Well, I want to thank you all for watching. Thank you for your company. Thank you for your comments. And uh, if you enjoyed this, please click like. It does help with the YouTube uh, algorithm. Everybody keeps telling me they don't understand why there aren't more views. Well, I guess I put too many people to sleep before they remember to click like. So if you're away, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now, and keep safe.